everyone, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo! Last time, we ditched school! Yeah, That's all I'm gonna say about that. Anyway, let's jump back into it. <clears throat> Eventually, we do, but we do go back to school, and the rest of the day is business as usual. When classes are over, Shizune and Misha pack their bags and leave the room before for me. Come to think of it, this is the first time they left le they've left me alone. It's strange. I almost miss them. The room empties quickly, and I'm the last one out the door. When I try to leave in the lobby, however, an arm lowers itself in front of me like a, a tall bridge gate, stopping me in my tracks. Oh, hi, Shizune! Oh, hi, Shizune! <laughs> <laughs> I just love how Husao also said it. A pair of hands from behind cover my eyes, followed by a sharp burst of laughter. I think we all know who is laughing. I think we all know who is laughing. Hey, Chan! Guess who? Misha asked the question completely without sarcasm, meaning she doesn't think I instantly knew it was her for many obvious reasons. I wonder who it could be. Well, it's definitely not Misha. <laughs> it is! Hello! Misha swings around to stand in front of me beside Shizune. Hey, Chan! Are you busy right now? Busy going to my room, yeah. See you two tomorrow. Ah, no, 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 no! No one, Shizune, Misha, they're not gonna allow that. I tried to make a break for it, but Shizune is too agile to get past. As someone who used to play soccer, this is embarrassing. Not to mention that this behavior is drawing some odd looks. I should just quit while I'm ahead. Hey, John! Could you please go upstairs and get a few things for us from the art room? Why me? <laughs> she chan th thinks that if the arts teacher sees us, he'll say hi and she doesn't like him! Ignore him. Yeah, just ignore him. She tried, but even though she chan is deaf, he'll try to say hi anyway! Run away. Looks like that's not an option. I never mind. A tone of finality is so strong that I can pick it up even through Misha. I can see there is no use pursuing this further with Shizune. Misha, why can't you get them? Stairs make me dizzy, Hichan. How? Shizune nods as if to confirm it. John, we need these things to build stalls for the festival, and you said you would help out a little, right? Right? I really should, but I guess just this once would be alright. Okay. Satisfied. That's great, Hee John! Thank you! This is what we need! She holds out a piece of paper for me to take. I'm sure this list was made by Shizune. It's handwritten, but each layer is perfectly formed and uniform as if it were typed. Not just that, but it's exhaustively detailed, complete with numbers, bullet points, and even little checkboxes. What it boils down to is that she it wants paint, paintbrushes, poster board, and an easel. Just different types and specific numbers of each. I wonder how I'm going to carry all this stuff down the stairs without breaking my neck. The, classroom close, the classrooms closest to ours are designated as belonging to classes 3-1 and 3-2 on the right side, and 3-4 on the left side, made each door looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with the identical doors, are rooms I didn't think were used for classes. I guess the art room is not my like classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs are all around the room, a thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some easels in the corner, so at least this looks like the right place. The room is flush in sunlight from the big windows, shadows creeping all over the desk. Specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air, making the beams of life almost the beams of light almost visible. Jokingly, I call into the empty room. Anybody ho Something catches my eye and I sob up mid sentence. And you barely let me read that sentence that mid sentence. <sighs> Oh, that's an interesting way to eat your food! I mean... It doesn't seem like she has... 
Jones. No, no, I should probably stop there before I say something insensitive. I should stop there before I say something potentially insensitive. Sitting on the desk is a short-haired girl, Kurt curiously wearing a boy's uniform, with a fork between her toes, a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. This odd way of dining seems to be caused by her lack apparent lack of hands, but her presence here is what makes what takes me back even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in a, the corner very still, but I still somehow took her as part of the furnishing or a statue at first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. The girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in headlights. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. I'm staring at her, my mouth wide open, suddenly remembering that I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stalemate keeps us both stunned into silence, punctuated only by the wall clock ticking rhythmically. Hello. I'm not 100% sure what kind of voice I should do for this girl, so... The girl stuffs the fork into, fork bowl into, her, into her mouth, and he starts staring at me expectantly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. A bit? A bit? Awkward? Um... I was told to pick up some supplies from here. So, for some festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here, too. She picks up another, another foot work full. Does that mean you are here, then? She raises her eyebrows at, as if she was expecting, suspecting my observation was false. You were pretty observant. Well, I was saying that it wasn't being observant, but... I guess it does. But who are you? This girl is pretty straightforward. This girl is pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai. He's out on Nakai. I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Reen. Tessica Reen. Reen Tessica. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. That's very nice. Her deadpan manner or of talking is it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me, joking about with these matters. It doesn't feel appropriate at all. Well, I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate and what this girl it is. She seems to have lost interest in me and is now gazing yearningly back at her food. Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind me, I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are at the back. Go right ahead, but... Lunch? School's already over for the day. Is there a word? It bothers me very much too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you're supposed to eat a meal all well, between lunch and dinner to begin with. but not getting a word out. I... I can guess. I'm, I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Ring cuts me off before I can answer a question or skirt around it somehow. I don't know which I would have done. I froze in front of this issue again. I haven't told anyone here about my condition, or maybe it's only because it, it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not making issues of this as part of the social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here could relate. Probably not any better than any normal person could. I can't relate to Shizune's circumstances or Lily's either. 
Naturally, while I go while I go through this in my head, Breen keeps considering what my condition could be with an overtly he contemplative look on her face. She puts her forks she puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head, and something in your guts would be boringly ordinary, as like this lunch of mine, and less delicious. Um. Okay. Okay then. I mean, the lunch could possibly be delicious, but, um, okay, moving on. The problem must be in your pants. Uh, this girl, this freaking girl, this freaking girl, read. I like you already. This messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement is in the lack in the sheer lack of tact it, it was delivered with catches me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled back like, even physically as Reen's eyes widen revelation and astonishment. So I was right! There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? Still partially in shock, but recognizing the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing I can think of. No, nothing like that! I have a heart prob problem. Arithmia. I said it. More like blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me purses her lips together and glares at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. Okay then. What's with this reaction? I'm sorry to have let you down. I forgive you. Just, I collect people and there's some, like, you know, that kind of problem with it. It really creates. I may have said that I liked Green before, but let's just. I just. I just can't figure this girl out! I just can't figure her out! I just can't! I mean, I try, but. I don't even know if I can! Asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. Da, 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 da. With little left to say, Reen moves her lunch, something in between lunch and dinner, and the conversation dies away, but I keep thinking about what it was said. It's the first time I told anyone about anyone else about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or you didn't need to know about it like every other student here so far. Should I have told it as a natural part of introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Hisao. I have a very serious heart condition. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would, would define us. What a disgusting thought. Mm -hmm. Or maybe this Tessica girl just has an unnatural interest in such things. As I walk to the back of the room to pick up the items on Misha's list, a chance opens to steady rain from the corner of my eye. Her hair is a burnt auburn, almost orange, and cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. The boy's uniform and the lack of arms make her look very thin, almost scrawny. She is not particularly pretty, except for her murky green eyes, which flicker restlessly from below her short fangs, even when she eats. The distance and the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb all of it within them like deep, well deep wells. She moves her feet almost as deftly as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see how this, light, how this sight would discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, at least. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? I keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the sounds grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, do you always eat alone in this lake? Or do you get the occasional visitor? Like me. Visitors? 
Maybe you are my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof, if she's not horsing around. Horsing? She likes to do sports. Why do I get the feeling that... Never mind. Oh. And that's all I can think of to say. Both of us fall silent again as Reen imports the last bit of her meal into her mouth. I look down my hall and double check it with Misha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. That's very nice for you. Don't feel obliged to stay. I was ready to take a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you were going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you'd like to watch girls sleeping. Oh dear. Uh... I'm not sure what to make of this, but Reen looks serious. Even if I did, I think I'd have to be going. I'll catch you around, Tiska. You can call me Reen. I feel that our relationship is at this point good enough to warrant this much. I think we just met! I was already trying to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine, then I'm his out. Then you are. Reen looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped the penis out of nowhere. See you later, Hisao. There is something like a tiny smile there in her face, maybe. Maybe? I quietly back out of the room. As I shut the, floor, as I shut the door in front of my face, I whisper to myself, one intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that. <laughs> oh, Reen. What did she hear? Uh, Misha! I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. I somehow had... Somehow she had gotten to jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. It briefly reminds me of Kenji's night theory about a global fe feminist conspiracy, but I push that thought aside. She's in the day standing slightly behind Misha, looks aloof as she couldn't have heard the, the remark that drew, drew Misha's attention, but Misha is visibly excited. No, wait, more importantly, who is in there? There's no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek past me, even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? You took so long that we had to check come check what's wrong. That's no good, Hee-chan! She wipes her finger at me, scolding me. I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy! Oh, sorry. Uh, I got the things... I got the things here. I was just going to ring them. I think you're up to some mischief, Hee-chan! Who is it in there with you, I wonder? You should sign in something quickly to Shizune, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. Shizune immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door into the classroom I just left. Oh dear. I can only imagine the shock she is experiencing. With Shizune's still just an attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares at Reed, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders from the suppressed rage from shore. Instead of blowing up, Shizune just takes a few deep breaths adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning to sign furiously at Misha. Oh dear. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me too, as if it was somehow my fault that Reed is sleeping on one of the tables. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tardiness. Hello. Reed's voice comes from the other side of the door, and it takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. I open the door to find Reen directly behind it, looking at us with, with a half-interested, half-sleepy face. Hello. Hello. Miss Tetsuka, what do you think you are doing? You are absolutely not permitted to use school properties for such a uh, disgraceful activity. Like napping? It sure is suddenly crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. Turn of events. I 
any rate, she ignores Shizune slash Misha scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizune ch taps Misha's shoulder, shoulder, points at Rin, and makes some quick signs. Popularity aside, please don't do that anymore! Anyway, how's your project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure of Shizune she's in these cold stare is playing on her I keep wondering about, about myself too and we'll think about it harder oh geez as Misha signs her reply to this her face turns into an unsatisfied frown Miss hmm. Tezuka please try to take this seriously it'll be a disaster if the wall looks like someone threw, their, threw up their lunch onto it Rain nods assertively We'll think more seriously. Oh dear. Misha actually giggles at that, but Shizune doesn't, not even after translation. She just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Rin frowns thoughtfully as she looks at after the retreating student council du duo. How rude. It's true though, I must finish my project right before the weekend. There will be dire consequ consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like weekends actually usually are, but more dire. Well, weekends are an end. Much more dire. Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. I'm about to ask what project she has and why are those apocalyptic consequences, but she walks back into the art room. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? This paint can doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks lightly at a huge can of paint that that's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. It lets her a dual clang. Being the gentleman I am, I naturally picked it up. up. Heavy. Yeah, sure. Where do you need to take it? Away. That's not very specific. And with that, she takes off to the hallway, me and the paint can falling since there's little choice for either, either of us. The hallway is quiet and empty now with Shizune and Misha gone, so we too leave towards the stairwell at the other end. Every 10 or 15 or 20 steps, I have to change the can from one hand to another because the thin handle cuts into my palm. At least, at least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. Rain strolls on beside me with an uneven pace that I have trouble matching, or maybe I am walking weird because of the extra weight. It seems one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast, but I can't figure out which. Two flights of stairs below, trouble appears in the form of the head nurse and his fox-like hate grin. Ah, Mr. Nakai, what a happy coincidence! Tezuka too, of course. He nods courteously to Noreen, who does not acknowledge him back, and turns to me because obviously it's me who he had some business with. There is something I forgot to mention on Monday. I nod and wait impassively because I can't even begin to... Who guess what he forgot? The feeling of the handle delving deeper into my skin doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about this interruption either. It's about your medications. Since you haven't been that long in your current medications, there might be some unexpected side effects, which might require adjusting dosages or even changing to another kind of medication. So we will do a few tests regularly, but I want but what I want is for you to keep an eye on everything in your condition that feels off, if you get what I mean. Nausea, headache, anything. You come see me if something happens. Alright. So how are you? Everything fine? I give up and drop the can to the floor before, an before answering him. Apparently this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I had to say something generic as an answer, but then I realize how often I've done that lately. Other people have asked me that, that too. Teachers and students here. Parents, visitors, nurses, doctors at the hospital. Everyone seems to be concerned about that. It's natural for a hospital, not so much for a school. Except this school. This is a small school, and both the student base and the faculty seem to be very tight knit. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. This is not the kind of school that, that gets transfer students too often. That sends shivers up my spine, but I give it to the answer anyway. What was, what was that generic answer? That's great! Also, one other thing. My sources tell me that you've 
been either at either the school truck or even the pool. So I'd like to know if you have taken up exercising as I asked. Well, of course I haven't, but it's way of inquiring gives me the feeling that I should have been running my butt off on the track since the very first day. You have people spying on me? Why do I get the feeling that if the if there's anyone who was spying on me, it's Shizune Misha. Not as such. I just happen to know a few people. But that's not the issue here, so don't try to slip out of it. Well, I was actually doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. I pick up and lift this pin up and down a few times, like some sad imitation of a bodybuilder, even though it's weighing down my arms painfully. The stupid grin disappears from his face for a second, then comes back like he was never gone. Tessica, would you give us a second? I've got a bad feeling about this. The nurse, the nurse grabs me by the shoulder without waiting for Reen's permission, which he didn't need in the first place, and drags me aside. When I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. I understand that you are still on your first week and all, but please don't ignore the importance of this. The reason I'm coming down on this hard on you is that habits are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder it will be. It's the same with everything, like dieting. Can you promise me to be more serious about this from now on? Maybe? Sure. Fine. Yeah, I promise. Definitely. He stares me for a moment, then shrugs, smiling again. Okay, that's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy, who probably has no qualms offering consultation to you if you want to jog a bit. Consultation? See you around! He leaves with a wave of his hand and no answer, and I walk to Reen, who had spent in waiting, idly leaning against the hallway wall and staring at the pale lying tech fixtures in the build in the ceiling. Even when I approach, she just she doesn't move her eyes off of them. Are you getting medications for your heart thingy? Were you listening? It comes out more accusatory than, than I intended accidentally lashing out on her. But even so, I don't really want to start talking about it. I just met her, I don't know her. It's not her it's not her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant of about confidentiality too, talking about that kind of thing in public. But it's not Reen's fault, is it? I look up at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty, but Reen is just staring past my shoulder quizzically, her head tilted like a bird's. <sighs> I don't know why like, this is so hard for me. It feels like there is some inexplicable luck that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, they're for my heart. Will they make you better? No, not really. They just make me feel a little less worse. Rin keeps looking at me for a little longer, and she sa neither says anything further nor displays any kind of emotion I could discern. I'm thankful that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all this. At the hospital, it was easy, but I still haven't for story my feelings about having to live a normal life with this disability. We leave the main building, and Rin leads us onwards towards the dorm. We stop at the small patch of greenery in front of the dorm building. The dorm is built on slightly a Elevated ground with a, a wall and a few trees that everyone has to circle around every time they come or go. It's probably the only inconvenient design in the school. The entire wall, made of the same kind of rip mixed as the building itself, has been covered by, with some sort of a painting. Most of it is still merely sketches, quick lines drawn with black and white against the gray plastering that covers most of the entire length of the wall, but some places look a bit more finished. There are human faces and legs and hands. I can't quite say that. What the painting as a whole might portray. Stacks of what seem to be paint cans are arranged in piles on the ground beside the wall. See, the left side is hardly off the ground yet. It's because I don't. It's because I couldn't get in the mood yesterday, so I gave up and went to meditate instead. Then it was suddenly morning. I have to work on it, but the guys from art class are helping with the negative spaces and basic surfaces whenever, which is the problem. It's easier to paint big areas if there are a lot of people with hands. The reach is better, and it's faster, too. She goes on a tangent of a tangent, waving a low with her arm, or whatever of it there actually is, to demonstrate that- to demonstrate even though I got the point already. The white cotton in her sleeve flaps around, and it makes me think it could- it looks higher than it does. But it makes me feel out of place, like almost every tangible reminder of the student base's special pro- 
properties it has in the past few days. This girl doesn't seem to notice my dreary feelings, of course. Or the fact that she lost me a while ago already. And just keeps on blabbering. So that's why I'm trying to figure out if there's something I need to figure out, and then figure that out before it's too late, and all hope is lost on me figuring it out. Why would the hope be lost? Because paint has to be painted, and then it's dry, and then it has to be painted over with another kind of paint. It takes time. She finally stops, apparently thinking she made some kind of a statement that makes sense. I think it's best to start from the top. So, this is your project. You did this? Yes, yes. All of it? Yes. Nice, but... I stumble with my words, suddenly feeling like I've walked straight into the minefield of political incorrectness. It's okay, you can say it. I probably won't get mad. I blush really hard. I don't really know what would be the right thing to say, if any. It feels that I'm way more sensitive than Reen is, though. This is really awkward. Don't you want to ask? How do you paint without hands? See, I'm an easy person to talk to, right? With my feet. Like with how I was eating lunch with my feet earlier. I almost guessed that already, but isn't that hard to do? You're good at guessing. Anyway, I don't think it is. But maybe I'm used to it by now. Well, I don't think I could ever get used to... Painting with my feet. But... That just makes me... Admire this girl more. She's got skills. I mean, granted, her lack of hands kind of forces her to learn skills like that, but still. I can't get my mind around the fact that she could be an artist, but some, but seeing how adept she was using her feet to eat, I think her painting might not be a problem either. Neither of us has anything more to add to the subject. The afternoon light, light looks pretty, it works pretty well. well. I was afraid it looked too flat, but it's not like that after all. I think it's actually pretty interesting. I wanted to see what it looks like in dim light. Do you think it's flat? Eh, uh, well, paintings tend to be flat. Not like that flat. You know, flat. Like some people are. No substance, no meat where, where there should be some. I know a few girls are- I- Okay, I get it! But I couldn't really tell. I'm not that good with, uh, with art. I can't name any artists or artistic terms. So I don't really have anything to say. Rain sh shrugs her shoulders at that saying suit yourself without saying it and looks up at the sky as if trying to look for something up there. I didn't think I'd get any actual work done, if, but if you give me a hand with the paints, I could do it alone before it's too dark. Too dark. I wanted to get a halogen map like the ones they have at the sports track, but there aren't any. Rain sure is quick to recruit my help, as was Shizune. It really makes me feel that the festival is such a big project with every pa that every pair of hands is needed. Why not? I'm not really sure if I could be of any help, though. That's just mixing some paints. You could do that. Probably. Do you have motor control problems? Like, you know, those people who have some. Cerebral palsy, maybe? Nope. Not that I know of. Not yet. Her thing has nothing to do with that. She gives me a sly look for no reason. No, it doesn't. Let's do it then. She, she, so she sits on an, an empty wooden box and very naturally picks up a wide brush between the toes of, of her bare right foot. I open a few of the cans and pour some of the contents into shallow bowls for mixing. The thick paint flows lazily from the can to the bowl like syrup. I mix them, creating funny, hypnotic-looking swirl patterns that melt quickly into each other to form a new monotone hue. Rain sets to work every now and then asking me for a hand with something or the other. Finding different brushes is easy enough, but mixing the paints to, to be the exact tone of this girl- to the exact the exact tone this girl is apparently seeing in her head is a frustrating ordeal. She wants pre precision down to the mass last milliliter before she is satisfied, but her instructions are obscure at best. Oh! Look at this background! Add half a splash of green. I crouch down to pick up the can of bright green. The other green. This green. I carefully pour some of the other green paint into the mixing bowl. 
No, that's almost a whole splash. More white. Is green a good color to add? No idea! You're the artist here! A hint of a smile appears in the corners of the mouth. Do you like an opinion? No, it's just that I have no idea. It's okay, because I just got an idea. Add more white. With this exclamation, I pour a minuscule amount of white into the bowl and mix it. It looks slightly... whiter. That's not good. It has to be more like... like the color you when you wake up and, and you know you, that you saw the meaning of life in your dream, but can't remember it. Okay! Maybe it's yellow. Despite the impossibility of mixing a color like the change of seasons or any other nonsense that's being imposed on me, I find myself enjoying it more than I thought I would. Seeing a painting being born on the plaster wall feels like magic. I spend the moments I have between mixing paints, crouching out on the paving, and just looking at our work. It feels slightly intrusive at first, like breaking some imaginary intimacy, but Rain doesn't seem to mind the least bit. Maybe it's just in my head. Her entire presence emits a completely different air as she patiently works the, the details, adding layers of paint on top of other layers of paint, steadily moving her foot across the wall to add new shapes. When I manage to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face is oddly rewarding. Apart from the few words when discussing paint, paint mixes, neither of us says a word for the longest time. And even those short discussions soon evolve into a shorthand both of us developing weird both developing and using weird impromptu code words for various paints and hues. As if there is some need to conserve words in breath and sound. And it's nighttime! We stay there late into the evening until it becomes too dark to paint properly. And we fade to black. Tama Shoujo! we got to the transition there, I think now would be a good time to end the episode. So, thank you all for watching, be sure to leave a like, and see ya in the next one! Yup, see ya!